もう始まってる。今日。Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain how to end Alice in Borderland Part 3. This series tells the story of people who are trapped in a dangerous game. When they try to get out of the game, they get trapped deeper in various intrigues. How will this story end? Let's find out in How to End Alice in Borderland Part 3. At the end of Part 2, all members of the Beach organization are forced to join the witch hunt game with a difficulty level of 10 hearts. But before starting the game, they were shocked by the discovery of the body of a girl who died from a stab wound to her chest. The girl turns out to be Momoka. The rules in the witch hunt game are quite simple. Players are required to find the witch who killed Momoka and burn her in the fire of judgment. It is unknown whether this witch is a boy or a girl. But one thing is for sure if the players fail to find and burn the witch until the game time limit, all players will die. After hearing the rules, the participants began to suspect and accuse each other. A commotion began in the Great Hall, until a goonie and the beach militants finally came and said they would kill everyone in the place, except the beach militants. A goonie was very sure that the witch was not among the members of the beach militants. Suddenly, the participants ran to save themselves from the beach militants who shot and threw them into the fire of judgment. But none of them was identified as the witch. The game continues, and the victims continue to fall. While the other militants hunted down the participants inside the hotel, Naragi monitored the situation from the rooftops and shot anyone who tried to flee the place. Not only that, Last Boss also started burning the beach hotel to kill everyone. Elsewhere, Yuzagi, Tada, and several other participants managed to escape from the beach militants and intend to save Arisu. Meanwhile, Chisia and Kyuna are in the operator's room to find out who is the witch among the players. In a quiet hotel room, Arisu, who had almost given up on his life, then remembered his past with Chota and Karu when the three of them were discussing the future. Arisu seemed to be reminded of his current purpose in life, and his fighting spirit rose again. He tried to untie the duct tape around his mouth and hands. Elsewhere, an attempt by Yuzagi and the others to save Arisu is thwarted by the beach militants who confront them. After struggling with a difficulty, Tata finally managed to get information about the location where Arisu was being held. Yuzagi, Tada, and a participant named Asagi then headed to the fourth floor and looked for Arisu there. Arriving on the fourth floor, Yuzagi heard Arisu's cry for help, which untwist the tape from his mouth. Yuzagi and her friends managed to find the room where him is being held, but again the members of the beach militants stopped them. After fighting with the militants, Yuzagi and Tada finally saved Arisu and took him out of the hotel room. Inside the hotel administration office, Kyuna caught sight of Anne, who looked like she was looking for something. Kyuna, Who was suspicious of Anne asked what she was doing and thought Anne was the witch. Anne said that she wasn't the witch. Instead, she was trying to find out about the identity of the witch through the fingerprints attached to the knife stuck in Momoka's body. Kyuna asked how to find out the fingerprints attached to the knife on Momoka's body. Anne answered lightly. She only needed super glue, masking tape, and a few small items often found on office desks. It turns out that Anne used to be a member of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police forensic team. That's why she knows how to take fingerprints at the crime scene with makeshift equipment. However, when Anne and Kyuna rushed into the Great Hall to sample the fingerprints on the knife stuck in Momoka's body, they were intercepted by Last Boss. Kyuna then told Anne to hurry to the Great Hall to face the Last Boss first. Without thinking, Last Boss immediately attacked Kyuna with his katana. But Kyuna was quite good at dodging every attack from the Last Boss. Slightly impressed by Kyuna's agile movements and sharp intuition when avoiding attacks, Last Boss then asked Kyuna about her work in the real world. Kyuna replied that she was just a clerk at a clothing store. But, when she was still a boy named Hikari, she was trained very hard by her father, a karate master and owner of a famous karate dojo in her city. Hikari, who is a boy, turns out to have a hobby of applying makeup. Seeing his son prefer to dress up than fight, Hikari's father was furious and destroyed all of his makeup equipment. Shortly after that incident, Hikari decided to leave the house and transformed into a woman named Kyuna. The fierce battle between Kyuna and Last Boss was quite balanced. Since Kyuna could dodge all of his attacks, Last Boss began to think of other ways to corner her. He then got the idea to throw glass bottles at Kyuna, so that the broken glass would be scattered on the floor and make it difficult for her to move, who was not wearing shoes at that time. Last Boss' tactic was quite successful. Kyuna seemed to be struggling to avoid the shards of glass from hitting her feet. Kyuna, who began to be pressed by Last Boss, almost wanted to give up, but then the image of her mother crossed her mind. Even though she has transformed into a woman, her mother still accepts her as she is and loves her with all her heart. Gradually, Kyuna rose from adversity, and her spirit of life rose again. She then concentrated, and when Last Boss attacked her, 
she immediately parried last boss's attack and paralyzed the thug with the deadly blow technique that her father had taught her. At the last moment, last boss remembers his past when he was a hikikomori who often wrote articles called Samura. Although he always writes articles that provide useful information, Samura has never received appreciation from netizens. Samura was also very upset because netizens preferred useless content and often hoax news rather than his articles which were always accurate. One day, when he came home from shopping, Samura realized that everyone had disappeared. After that, he was forced to participate in various deadly games to survive. Strangely, seeing people die and often killing other people to stay alive and win the game makes Samura have a vibrant life. He then changed his appearance and named to last boss as it is now. Back in the game, Naragi, who was on the roof, seemed to enjoy executing the participants running into the courtyard because his friends in the past often bullied him. Not long after, Chisia came to the roof and accused Naragi of being the witch. Chisia says that the witch is one of the executive members of Beach, and he intends to kill all the executive members starting from Naragi. Chisia then threw all the cards Hatter had collected in the air to distract Naragi. After that, he aimed the fire gun at Naragi, causing him to catch fire and fall from the roof. On the other hand, Aguni, standing still in front of the fire of judgment, pensively recalled the memories of the past when he and Hatter were still close friends in the real world. At that time, Hatter, who used to work as a host in Kabukicho, got a wool from his father to manage a hat shop. Hatter decided to retire as a host and run a hat shop to please his father. Aguni often visits Hatter hat shop and helps his friend. Likewise, Hatter, who also always helps and supports him. Meanwhile, the game has 30 minutes left. Arisu and the others are still trying to solve Momoka's murder case and find the real witch. The other participants assumed that the witch was a member of the beach militants, but Arisu said they didn't have enough evidence to prove it. Arisu then tries to think from a game master's point of view because the witch hunt game is a game with a 10 hearts difficulty level. It can confuse players' feelings and minds to blame each other and end up killing innocent people. Arisu then gets a little enlightenment to uncover the Momoka murder case and find the witch. Elsewhere, Anne investigates the Momoka murder case and discovers the witch's identity by revealing the fingerprints attached to the knife. She was very surprised to learn the true identity of the witch. When she rushed to tell everyone about it, she was instead attacked by members of the beach militants and immediately collapsed unconscious. With only 15 minutes remaining before the game time ends, Aguni and the members of the beach militants gather all the surviving players in the Great Hall and intend to kill them, but then Arisu comes and tells Aguni that they all work together to find the witch. Arisu approaches Aguni and states that he is not the witch, because Naragi and the other militant members had locked him up before the game started. But for some reason, Aguni punched Arisu and beat him. Yuzagi, who helped Arisu, said that Aguni had been the witch all this time and deliberately avoided people's suspicions by accusing all beach members of being witches. Unexpectedly, it turns out that Aguni admits that he is indeed a witch. When the militants intend to kill Aguni, Arisu stops them and says Aguni is not a witch. Arisu then reveals that the real witch is Momoka. The girl deliberately killed herself and made it look as if someone had killed her. However, Aguni doesn't care about the witch's identity because he has other motives to kill everyone in the beach organization. It turned out that Hatter was killed by Aguni. Arisu realized this when he remembered the look on Aguni's face when he attended a meeting on the day of the Hatter's death. Aguni's facial expression when he saw Hatter's corpse was like someone who had lost hope in life and no longer cared about anything in this world. After founding the beach organization, Hatter slowly turned into a selfish person and did anything to get what he wanted. Even Aguni once found Hatter was slaughtering his friends just because they hid some cards from him. Since then, Aguni thinks that Hatter has changed drastically and is no longer the man he used to know. Aguni then invited Hatter to dissolve the beach organization, but Hatter refuses and instead considers Aguni a traitor. Hatter did not even hesitate to attack him and considered it appropriate because every traitor must be executed. But Aguni avoided Hatter's attack and accidentally shot him. Back in the game, Aguni was furious, then attacked the players because he thought that they had all turned his friends into evil and cruel people. In the chaos, Asahi then asked Arisu and Yuzagi to take Momoka's body and throw it into the fire of judgment so that the game was over. After saying this, Asahi revealed that she was a game dealer, and instantly, she was shot by a laser beam which instantly killed her. All the players were very shocked to witness the incident. They were still not sure what was going on until Anne finally came with Kuna and told everyone that Momoka was a witch and had deliberately killed herself. They don't know why Momoka and Asahi did such a terrible thing, but it looks like the two girls have also been controlled by the game master, just like everyone is controlled to follow every deadly game that exists in this place. Arisu then tells the players to stop the chaos and start working together to finish the witch hunt game, because so many lives have been lost in vain. But before long, the flames ignited by last boss began to spread into the Great Hall. 
In the fire, Naragi came and spread fear by shooting people blindly. He turned out to have survived Chisia's attack and had the ambition to kill everyone who was there. Arisu and Yuzagi tried to stop Naraga's madness, but he was no match for them who lacked experience and fighting skills. Arisu and Yuzagi were getting desperate. When Naragi was about to kill both of them, suddenly Aguni came and protected them both. Aguni immediately pushed Naragi and carried his body into the smoldering fire. After that, the players took Momoka's body to the Fire of Judgment to finish the game. Arisu, who was about to catch up with the players, accidentally found Asaha's cell phone, which was actually recording the course of the game this time. In the end, all of the surviving players managed to complete the deadly game Witch Hunt on a 10 hearts difficulty, despite sacrificing nearly half of the people at the beach hotel that night. The players could only stare at the Fire of Judgment that blazed with stinging feelings. Because many of their friends had died in vain due to hatred and empty suspicion, the beach organization and the five-star hotels that had been sheltering them are now burned into ashes. Yuzaga's anger is further ignited when she sees several members of the beach militants who are still alive and intend to kill them, but Arisu tried to calm her down by saying that players shouldn't kill each other in a deadly game. Instead, the players have to work together to finish the game and beat the game master so that they can all get out of that place. On the other hand, Chisia and Kuna managed to get a 10 of hearts card and thus, all the number cards have been completed. They will play a deadly game with a face card difficulty level of Jack, Queen, and King. A few days later, Arisu and Yuzagi check Asahi's cell phone and find a video recording showing Asahi and Momoka. It turns out that the two of them are high school students trapped in the city when everyone else disappeared. But instead of being told to play, Asahi and Momoka were asked to do something by a mysterious person. Asahi and Momoka were then directed to a hidden place under the train station. In that place, they can see the monitor screens that fill the room's walls, and many people work there to organize and supervise the game. Asahi and Momoka are recruited to be dealers in the game and are asked to do many things according to the Game Master's directions. If they refuse to carry out orders from the Game Master, they would all be executed immediately. After viewing the video recording on Asahi's cell phone, Arisu and Yuzagi then head to the underground station and hope to find the mastermind who controls the entire deadly game. But when they got there, everyone who worked on the game master had died, and the place had fallen into disrepair. Not long after, Chisia came with Kuna carrying all the cards they had collected. Chisia said that he could find this place after studying the image he found in the pocket of a masked horse chaser at the game of chase some time ago. Upon further inspection, it turns out that the image is a route map for the subway station. Chisia also didn't expect to meet Arisu and Yuzagi here. He hoped that he could find the mastermind behind all the deadly games when he came to this place. But it turned out that everyone who set the game had died along with the victory of those who managed to complete the game of Ten Hearts. Chisia then assumes that the game master in this deadly game is an alien or a god, because he can manage games that involve many people, and create a game arena that is so large and technologically advanced. Shortly after Chisia said that, suddenly the lights in the room came on as did the screens on the monitors throughout the room. The monitor screen showed the figure of a woman who was very familiar to the four of them. The woman is none other than Mira. It turns out that Mira is the game master who manages all the deadly games in that place. The women looked happy and congratulated Arisu, Yuzagi, Chisia and Kuna for completing the entire game on the card difficulty level. Mira then said that starting tomorrow, they would play a game with a face card difficulty level of Jack, Queen, and King, and asked the four of them to prepare themselves before joining the game. Even though he has to play a game that will risk his life again, Arisu is quite satisfied with his current situation because he finally knows who he must defeat to avenge the deaths of Chota and Karub. The next day, when Arisu, Yuzagi, Chisia and Kuna gathered at Shibuya Crossing, they saw several hot air balloons flying while carrying a giant banner of Jack, Queen, and King face cards indicating that from now on they would be playing a deadly game with a high level of difficulty. This is the end of Alice in Borderland Part 3.